Today, cash remains king in an outage, so let's protect it. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. So from this post covering finance and property news. Well, millions of Australian consumers and businesses were left without the ability to make or accept payments on Wednesday the 8th of November, thanks to the major outage at Optus. Optus is going to be subject of a government review, a Senate inquiry, and a probe by the Australian Communications and Media Authority after its network collapsed and stayed down for more than nine hours. So in today's show, we take a look at some of the implications of this. This is the latest example of the collapse of critical digital infrastructure. And I've been reminding my followers for some time and has demonstrated again, power, internet, FPOS systems can all fail and leave us completely stranded. There were so many stories of businesses unable to transact, having to take IOUs or simply closing their doors. And as a result, thousands of businesses lost sales yesterday. And Optus rightly faces possible compensation claims. Some healthcare services were disrupted and even emergency calls sometimes were left unanswered. 10 million customers were affected, which included major businesses and hospitals. But it highlights again the risks of being so digitally exposed. It was the same story through the bushfires a few years back and during the recent floods. The truth is a digital infrastructure is very, very vulnerable. And it comes back to the question of the availability of cash because real dollars need to be available to protect us from outages. It's not possible to trust a reliable cashless payment system that's always online. Only cash is reliable 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Other nations like the UK, the European Union and states in the US protect their citizens' rights to choose cash. And now the Australian government must catch up and also mandate cash acceptance or require banks to provide us with access to our own cash. This is yet another reason to underscore that banks need to stop closing branches and ATMs because banks enjoy a special place at the heart of our economy. No Australian can get paid without a bank account. So banks have an obligation to provide us with local cash access. And by the way, last month, APRA confirmed that Australia lost another 424 bank branches in the last 12 months and 718 bank owned ATMs. When cash is not available or widely accepted, Australia is vulnerable to outages, said Jason Bryce, who's running a petition on change.org with 130,000 signatures and growing daily, calling for a legal right to choose cash and access cash. And telecommunications experts have warned that Australia's largest mobile providers are vulnerable to yet another major outage due to gradual cost cutting and a critical lack of regulation. Industry expert Mark Gregory told ABC 730 that the catastrophic outage was likely due to a single point of failure and the lack of backup systems that could have prevented the extended length of the outage. I think we can already conclude that the Optus network is not fit for purpose, Mr. Gregory said, adding that unless the systems are improved, the network remains vulnerable to more outages. We don't have the reliability and redundancies that many of us would expect our technology companies to have. We know it was more than a human error or infrastructure error. We know that it was a decision made by the company in the way that their network is designed and built, he said. Mr. Gregory said that Optus and Telstra have likely concluded that building highly advanced safeguards into their infrastructure and software is too expensive and have been allowed by the government to prioritise profit over the reliability of the service. The telcos, like all technology companies, want to minimise their engineering spend. They're trying to maximise profit and they're trading off the possibility that there will be outages or failures in the efforts to make a larger profit, he said. Optus has been operating as a second telecommunications carrier since 1991. That's six years before Telstra began privatisation. And Optus will provide eligible customers, including small businesses, with 200 gigabytes of free data as compensation for its nationwide outage that lasted for more than 12 hours and impacted more than 10 million Australians. The Optus network is designed with multiple layers of fallback and redundancy, they said. 
And at the heart of this is a modern intelligent router network developed with the world's leading vendors. Despite this, a network event yesterday triggered a cascading failure which resulted in the shutdown of services to our customers. And telecommunications expert Paul Budd said that he anticipated issues would arise when Australia's carriers moved to a more deregulated environment. It all goes back to when Telstra was privatised back in the 1990s. At that point in time, people like myself argued that now was the time to come up with good regulation, he said. It's not just another company like a chocolate factory. No, this is integral to our society, to our economy, and it, that was not recognised when Telstra was privatised, and the situation has continued until now. And Mr Bubba was also concerned by the lack of redundancies in both Telstra and Optus systems. We cannot have a single point of failure. It's just unacceptable, he said. We had a problem with Telstra back in May this year, and we had a big hack with Optus last September and as I've mentioned we've had similar sorts of outages that lasted half a day and we see sometimes in the regions it takes days for companies to fix outages it's not just Optus it's also Telstra. The lengthy outage at Optus internet and mobile services across the country actually could have been caused by the same issue that brought down Facebook two years ago some experts suggest. Cloudfare which tracks a range of activity on the internet noted a spike in something called Border Gateway Protocol, BGP, announcements from the telco coinciding with the time Optus's network went offline. BGP effectively acts as a roadmap for the internet and the announcement tells the rest of the internet the easiest way to a particular location. Matt Tett, Managing Director of Network Analyst Company NX Test Lab, told Guardian Australia that while he was not certain of the cause, Optus appeared to have had some failure in routing at 4am that caused an exponential increase in BGP announcements. This is the reason why it brought down not just the internet but also landlines and mobile services, Tet said. It's because networks are now IP based and when the internet protocol network has an issue, absolutely, it will take down all of their systems. Facebook WhatsApp and Instagram went offline for five hours in 2021 due to an issue with the BGP. Facebook at the Times said that it was a configuration change in the backbone routers that coordinate network traffic between the company's data centers, which had caused a cascading effect and brought Facebook services to a halt. In the case of the Facebook outage, it took a long time for the global company to fix the issue. And similarly, the CEO of Optus, Kelly Bayer Rosemarin, told the ABC that engineers at Optus have tried a number of paths of restoration to bring mobile internet services back online. So the bottom line is this, we cannot rely on digital services to always be there, which means we absolutely need to have fallbacks. And from a transaction perspective, cash is the most certain of facilities to enable transactions to continue when the power goes out or when the internet goes out. There is no possibility of having such complex technical systems working 100% of the time and people of course will be therefore exposed and therefore we need to have facilities and strategies and also regulation to ensure that alternatives exist. Therefore access to cash and availability of cash must be brought to the fore, must be legislated and I do suggest that you sign up for Jason Bryce's petition because we need to bring more pressure on government for cash to be regulated as a required service forever. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.